Welcome everybody and thank you for joining the latest Boutique Hotel News webinar and today we are going to be talking about the future of reputation management. My name's Eloise Hans and I'm going to be your host for today's webinar and when I'm not hosting webinars I am editing Boutique Hotel News and we are an online trade publication. We cover the global boutique lifestyle and luxury hotel industry. So today's episode is kindly sponsored by Rove Hotels and to introduce the brand, we just have a short video to play for you. Further details about Rove Hotels has been popped into the chat if you would like to learn more. Now, let's meet our speakers. Um, I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves, and I'm going to move from left to right as per the PowerPoint slides, just so that we don't all get confused. Um, so I am going to kick off with Anna first. Welcome, Anna. Hi. Thank you, Eloise. What an inspiring video, Conrad. Well, congratulations. So, hi, everyone uh, online. I, my name is Anna. I'm a sales engineer at CG Review Pro. Uh, I've been in the hospitality industry for over 15 years, uh, working in various roles from uh, hotel director of sales to leading customer success teams. And I really, really enjoy using data analytics to enhance uh, guest experience and improve operations. So, let them in and explore what we can share and what we can all say about it. I think that it's gonna be an amazing uh, webinar. Super, thank you, Anna. And Kate, uh, welcome to yourself. Short introduction, please. Yeah, thank you, Eloise. And yeah, hello everybody, good afternoon. So I'm Kate Burns and I'm Senior Solutions Consultant for Reputation for the EMEA region. So I've actually been at Reputation for close to seven years now when we do cover lots of different sectors, but I've predominantly worked within the hospitality sector within, during that seven year period. And so during my time at Reputation, similar um, to Anna, um, you know, worked in lots of different roles. So ultimately what I've supported our customers with is actually helping them understand their business challenges and really aligning and creating a program that's really gonna help them focus on driving footfall, but listening to customer feedback mm -hmm making sure that they've got the insight basically to drive the right behaviors and um, from an operation perspective um so yeah ultimately the reputation platform is there to help our customers always know and always act on that customer feedback thank you kate really looking forward to learning more about what insights you're going to share today um and conrad last but by no means least over to you and welcome Hello and good evening from Dubai. Uh, my name is Conrad. Thank you for the introduction. It's a pleasure uh, to be uh, on this panel. Um, I've been working in the hotel and leisure and entertainment industry now just for over a decade. Um, and currently um, the director of quality and brand experience for uh, Rove Hotels uh, for the last five years. Uh, Rove is a lifestyle brand uh, based in the UAE. Uh, we currently have about 10 properties uh, in operation with our uh, next hotel coming soon. Um, and I have the pleasure um, of supporting uh, the teams uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we adhere to all of our quality uh, and brand experience uh, standards. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks once again and looking forward to the webinar. Brilliant. We've got a varied perspectives on the webinar today um, and all the LinkedIn profiles of our speakers are in the chat. I do encourage you to connect, carry on that conversation long after today has finished. Um, and to give you an overview of how today webinar or today's webinar is going to run, we'll spend around 45 minutes in conversation today. Um, we do like to make these webinars as interactive as possible. So if you do have any questions, uh, please do submit these uh, using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screens. I will get round to asking those questions as and when relevant. If not, we'll take some time at the end to take those questions from the floor. And as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded. Every single person that has registered will receive a copy of that recording within two days time. 
So before we dive in to the main discussion, I always, always like to hide some context slides. Um, these are headlines that I have pulled from other media sources, all to really explain why we are here today talking about reputation management. And research earlier this year uh, showed that reputation management ranks the highest concern amongst UK business owners, surpassing concerns like falling profits and staff turnover. So almost nine in 10 of those business owners and directors that were surveyed said reputation management is more of a priority for their business than A, training their employees, and 86% that it was more of a priority for them than B, sustainability. I could argue that, that, that corporate social responsibility and, and you know, pushing up that green agenda can actually have a very positive impact on your reputation and brand image, provided that you're not greenwashing, of course. In today's convo, we will also explore the use of AI in reputation management. Um, the middle headline on your screen discusses how AI is being used alongside search engines. Um, so you can research brands and, and understand the, the rhetoric, the online conversations that, be, that are being said around those brands. And the final headline um, provides some examples of how luxury retail and hospitality brands are using such things as virtual concierges, AI chatbots, algorithms for personalized marketing. Um, but it also touches on the risks that are, that are perhaps associated with such strategies. Um, the the uh, article actually argues that because luxury brands are often held to a higher standard, they can face greater criticism and reputational damage when such incidents like um, uh, discrimination whilst dealing with an AI chatbot might happen. Um, on the next slide, uh, whilst for most of this afternoon we are going to be talking about reputation management from a B2C perspective, let's not forget about the power of B2B. We do work in an industry that is built around people and relationships with other people. And when I was researching for this webinar, I came across a metric by LinkedIn called the LinkedIn Social Selling Index. Now, I'm not a salesperson, so this is new to me. So apologies if I'm quite late to the game here. Um, and this score gives you, or a brand, a ranking out of 100 that is judged across four key pillars. Um, and you get a maximum score of 25 for each of those pillars. And those pillars include your profile. So do you have a professional headshot? Is your company linked to your profile? What endorsements have you got um, from those people in your network? Second pillar is your network. So are you connecting with the relevant people that are most appropriate to the field that you are working in? The third pillar, it also tracks engagement. So when you post, how many likes, how many comments are you generating post, but also your activity? How are you engaging with other posts on LinkedIn? And the fourth pillar is a relationship building. So what are you searching for on LinkedIn? How many profiles are you viewing and what types of profiles are they? How many days active are you uh, throughout the week on, on LinkedIn? And the reason I'm flagging this is because from this score, um, you can see mine up on the screen there, so it's all, it's all exposed now, uh, but you can determine how well you are doing um, when you are building your profile to attract the right kind of clients. And if you're a hotelier, this could be a, a hotel tech provider, it could be a potential employee down the line, whilst also establishing yourself as a thought leader within your given field. So something that I uh, thought I would flag, and if you're interested in finding out your own SSI score, the link is in the chat. Um, it's quite, a, quite an insightful tool or metric to play around with. So let's talk about reputation management. And what I am quite curious to touch on firstly is how that online 
customer booking journey has evolved, especially when you look at the rise of digital technologies. So Kate, I'm going to kick off uh, with yourself, please. Um, talk to us about how that online customer journey has evolved in recent years. Yeah, so yeah, the typical customer journey, you know, continues to evolve, you know, in the digital age, you know, you think about we used to just go to the travel agents or, you know, we, we'd go direct to, you know, the, the hotel website. But, you know, there's a lot now from a digital perspective that is really influencing how travels, travelers really, first of all, research, compare, and then go on to book. So, you know, typically the start of a digital journey um, from a reputation standpoint starts on a search engine. So, you know, how many times do we go to Google and type in find a hotel near me or hotels near Dubai? Um, I wouldn't say Liverpool, um, where I'm <laughs> say, it might be more exciting. You know, and, and typically what we're looking at is what Google actually is presenting as, you know, those best um hotels um you know in a local three pack search you know what is the look what what's that best hotel based on consumer feedback because i think what's interesting what you've just touched on there when you think about your own brand as a person you know businesses and brands today have a brand promise but actually what consumers do which takes me on to my next point is before they make a purchasing decision and if that's booking a hotel they will crowdsource information. So they will actually go on and actually find what other customers and consumers are saying about either that particular brand or the hotel. So start of the search would be typically your likes of Google, your Bing, et cetera, mm. Apple Maps even. But then, you know, typically what they then do will go to a review sites. So those review sites to crowdsource, you know, what other customers' experiences have been. So that would be the likes of your Google, TripAdvisor, Expedia, Facebook, et cetera, as well. Because actually 60% of consumers actually feel that the number of reviews a business has is critical when they're deciding whether to choose mm -hmm. them. So, you know, really influential, influential statistic there. But then it goes broader than that from a digital perspective, because if you think about the social media era that we're in and influencer marketing, so you think you've got the likes of Instagram, TikTok, you know, that really inspire travelers with, you know, with that appealing content about where they've stayed, where they've, you know, where, where they've visited. Mm -hmm. And they can really shape the perceptions of a destination or, or of an accommodation as well. And then even broader across the website, um, of the across the internet, you've got the likes of travel blogs, online communities. And then I know it's going to be a hot topic today, but, you know, things like voice search, but then the AI assistance as well. You know, consumers want it to be really easy to actually go on and for AI or a voice assistant to tell them what the best hotel is or to give them consumer feedback or information about a brand. They want it quick and they want it easy these days as well. Mm. And then the final kind of point to touch on is, you know, that's the start of the digital journey. But then, you know, as you're starting to explore more and more, you know, customers will then go to comparison sites, you know, those online travel agencies where you can, you know, booking.com, Expedia, you know, where you can start to then compare not only the amenities, but, you know, compare prices, et cetera, but also the reviews as well. So reviews play heavily within that, that journey at different touch points. And then, of, of course, there's the direct website as well. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you think about how that digital journey evolved and continues evolved with the likes of AI, you know, there's a lot there to actually, for brands to actually manage. So really interested to hear as, as we go through the, um, the webinar today, how um, Comrade is managing this from, you know, a brand mm -hmm. in his business. Anna? I can see your hand is up, please. Come yeah, on. actually, there is a, a statistics that says that uh, normally, as an average, um, uh, travelers are going through 38 different websites before making a booking decision. And, and definitely, this indicates through, you know, research processes and guest compare options uh, across various platforms, including, as you were, uh, mm -hmm. Well, saying Kate, you know, online travel agencies and direct hotel uh, websites. So it's incredible. 
when I hear stats like that and you hear of those 38 building blocks before before maybe a traveller makes a decision, I wonder if you had to condense that into three key areas, what would those main touch points be? If you had to say to a hoteler, you need to prioritise three to five of these rather than the whole 38. Um, Kate, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you on this if you don't mind. As If you're consulting a hospitality business, what do you say you absolutely have to have in place? Yeah, I mean, when we're talking about reputation management, um, you know, as, as I started to mention, um, as I started with before, it's the search engine piece, it's mm. search engine optimization that I would say is the first building block to this because consumers go to Google and do search. So it's actually thinking about those keyword search and actually thinking about the competitiveness within the marketplace. So it's about actually have, have you got a Google um, profile for mm. each of your hotels? Mm. Have you, and just as I've said that, my Google has actually gone off in the background. <laughs> um, so have you got a profile? But then if you've got your profile, you know, is it optimized? And when I say optimize, have you got good reviews on there? Are you interacting and responding to your reviews? Um, you know, have you got good photographs, good images? Um, and then really, um, I would say it's, um, you know, then thinking about those review source sites, because there's a lot of focus that go that, you know, that, that goes in from a, a buy-in perspective as a consumer. So, mm. you know, you have to make sure that you are driving reviews because, you know, 38 different touch points, they, consumers really do crowdsource the information. So for me and how I'd advise my customers in relation to their program and their strategy, you know, there's always a starting point. So I would say, you know, for publicly facing and available and crowdsourced, I would say think about Business systems, not just on Google, I only mentioned Google before, but if you think about those other sources where, you know, that you've got TripAdvisor, you've got your Apple Maps, etc. as well. Mm. Thanks, Kate. Let's bring Anna into the conversation here, because I would imagine that with all these multiple touch points, um, there is a lot of data to track and monitor. Um, so with that in mind, Anna, how can hoteliers look to start leveraging all these data analytics from all these various sources to gain those deeper insights into their online reputation. Thank you. I think I think it's clear that uh, in today's busy hospitality world, managing a hotel's online reputation is really important. We we already said that and, and Kate confirmed. So guests are relying more and more on online reviews to make their choices. So definitely hotel managers need to keep up with, you know, changing expectations. Um, I always like to uh, picture a real situation. So let's imagine that we have, you know, uh, in the audience or here with us, Sarah, uh, as the manager of a hotel in the city center, a very popular spot known for its friendly service. But despite the positive reviews, uh, Sarah was finding it tricky to keep up with managing the hotel's online reputation. You know, with the reviews dispersed across different platforms, she felt super overwhelmed and reactive uh, and missing important feedback that could help improve guest experiences. So I would say today, without a centralized system, uh, Sarah and many hoteliers are struggling to spot trends in, in, in guest feedback. And often, uh, you know, uh, she realized that many complaints about, let's say, an example, slow restaurant services or cleaning less uh, went unnoticed. So leading to unhappy guests and ratings that were really, really improving. So um, Sarah, let's say, found a tool like ours, uh, like Shijiro Pro, and decided to give it a shot. So and for her and for many of our clients and and Conrad, maybe you can support us on that. Everything changed uh, with a centralized dashboard. Uh, she could really now see all the reviews in one place. This saved her a lot of time each week and you know allow her to focus on what truly really matter. That basically is the guess. No, using sentiment analysis, Sarah definitely discovered while guests enjoy the hotels amenities. 
Many also were frustrated to, you know, the slow service. So I think that one of the key things is prioritizing staff training was able to boost really in this in that example of the slow service uh, restaurant ratings. So I think that embracing tools like Shijiru Pro, hotels managers like you know Sarah can really take control of their online reputation and transform the guest feedback into actionable insights that is ultimately you know the goal that it's um, and hates both guest satisfaction and business performance um, mm -hmm. and I think it's you know all about making uh, informed decisions that led to memorable experience for every visitor mm -hmm. so um, yeah I was going to say Anna could you um you just mentioned sentiment analysis, um, yeah. and, and this is, of course, also trying to look at real-time monitoring, right? Trying to stay abreast, and, and this is where I want to bring in AI, because AI is now giving us greater accessibility to be able to achieve this in a much more efficient way. Um, Anna, could you give us like a, like a snapshot update of where we are with AI in terms of the larger re uh, reputation management piece, how is it being used currently or where are we at with those early experimental stages? Um, there are different like um, approaches to AI. Uh, at Gigi Rupro currently we are uh, offering our guests or we are going to launch very soon officially to all our clients the possibility to use AI technology to respond to uh, online reviews, always following through, you know, the European laws in this case that, um, that you know, that requires mandatory always to have a human to validate the response, but definitely helps and supports, you know, to keep the 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 tone and the style that you want to set up for your mm -hmm. hotel. Also very soon to support as well with the responses and surveys. Um, I know that uh, there is much more to come in our roadmap uh, uh, as well. It's gonna come AI insights on sentiment analysis and 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 all of that. But I can only say until here today. But <laughs> definitely, a lot of things are coming, and later on I will be able to maybe um, you know explain a little bit more how it's gonna affect the hospitality. But definitely, it's um, it sounds really really empowering how mm. hospitality can make a good use of it. Thanks, Anna. Conrad, over to you. Yeah, now just to, to add on to um, what I was saying about uh, about AI. I mean, it's for for someone like me who's the end user of these types of tools. It's really exciting because it'll allow us to have um, better and quicker and more accurate insights um, into into what our, our guests and customers are saying. And uh, with the massive volume of feedback that's out there, um, it can be sometimes uh, you know a challenge to sift uh, through everything. Um, and yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the advances in, in AI technology and how it's incorporated and, um, and, and helps uh, people like me and, and counterparts uh, like myself across the industry. Of course, you know, this technology has to be used responsibly and, and ethically, um, but, uh, but yeah, looking forward. How, how early in your journey, Conrad, are you um, using AI in turn, you know, are you at that early experimental stage? Are you encouraging your staff members to embrace it and, and, and using it? I mean, where, can you give us where you're at on, in that journey? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I think it's, you know, like I said, if, it, if it's used responsibly, I think it can be, it can be really helpful. Um, at the moment, uh, the technologies are still a bit new and there still needs to, I mean, we're a human industry at the end of the day, so there still needs to be this, this human touch. Um, but I've had, um, I've had some conversations with, um, with uh, portals out there um, and tools out there, um, including uh, uh, ReviewPro. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, it's exciting, but I think I'm, I'm curious to see what's, what's gonna happen. Um, and again, ensuring that that human touch of our industry um, isn't lost. Mm. And, and, and staying with you, uh, Conrad, I mean, you've the rove has has many uh hotels in in, in dubai in the uae um very competitive market mm -hmm. when it comes to hotels what is your approach to reputation management when you are you know carving a, a very 
a carving a name in a crowded marketplace um how how are you challenging to stand out from the crowd um well it's true it is very competitive um as was earlier mentioned um by, by kate you know people look at 30 odd plus um pages or or, or portals before they make a, a specific um, decision uh you know on top of that although there's been a massive resurgence of travel since since COVID, people are still can be um, a, a bit price sensitive. So, you know, ensuring that um, your, your scores are up, your reviews are good um, is really important because it can be that um, decision making factor for, um, for, for a traveler. Um, so you know, it is it is competitive. Um, we're very fortunate uh, as a brand that we, we actually do really, really well um online i mean just for an example our um, average uh, booking.com score across the group is, is 9.1 um, across 10 hotels which is which is very challenging um to do um i think though that you know all the success it, it really just boils down to to our team and the amazing job that they do when the guests are are in our hotels um I, you know i'm a true believer that if you do a great job and your guest leaves happy then, then the good reviews will will come in. I think it still always starts at at the you know the experience that someone has um, in your property. Um, you can't you can't really game the system um, and get reviews without doing a good job and putting in the hard work. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, there obviously is um, need, a need for a proactive approach in in managing um, reputation online. Um, so we um, actually have been a partner of Shiji Review Pro um, for uh, now for for I think six seven years. Um, and it's a really, really helpful, helpful tool to kind of give us that um, uh, high level overarching picture um, and still keeping a pulse on, on everything that's, um, that's being said online about the, about the brand and about um, individual hotels. Um, for the hotel team themselves, um, we have um, you know, a really strong uh, program to ensure that ownership of online reviews and, and reputation is, 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 you know, sits at the hotel level. Um, we're really proactive in encouraging our guests to uh, who we call rovers uh, to leave uh, their feedback um, online and, and share their experiences. Um, we're also really uh, focused on responding to um, reviews. Um, I think it, it's important to let um, customers who take the time to, to leave some feedback, good or bad, um, that uh, they know that the business is listening. And so we have a target of responding to all reviews, every single one, um, within 24 hours. Um, and then, um, you know, we always encourage the teams as well to celebrate the successes, celebrate all the good reviews and, and learn from, from any negative ones. Um, from my role specifically, um, uh, I really, it's really important for me to look at trends, um, monitoring any kind of performance, um, and then analyzing uh, the feedback that comes in, looking at any gaps in, in service and um, essentially making, uh, making strategic changes um, across, across the business. Um, I think you know maybe more a bit more of a granular example of, of some challenges that that we face. Um, uh, to be honest, our teams they're just so passionate about about um, how they perform online and what guests think of their experience. Um, and so, unfortunately, sometimes they'll take uh, the odd negative review a little bit too personally. Um, and uh, yeah, so you know, from my advice to them always is is take it as a learning experience and and use it to grow and and uh, improve on 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 any gaps that, that are identified and just move forward. Mm. There's definitely a, a, a larger focus now on, on well-being when it comes to staff um, and, and how they can, um, I suppose, protect their, their mental health or, or better support their mental health. And, and we're seeing something that I'm seeing, our new employee recognition platforms launch or, or reward platforms launch so that staff members can actually, um, rather than rely on on customer feedback externally mm -hmm. you are recognizing the good work of your team members internally too um in in order to better to support that that positive mental attitude um oh I, yeah totally totally i mean those those moments of catch me at my best are are super super critical and i think it's it's so much more helpful to um praise someone or give them some some you know feedback right then and there rather than, than, than to wait at a later stage. It's, uh, it's, it's super important and it's much more relevant um, for uh, mm. individuals, definitely. We've, we've talked um, a bit uh, so far already today about feedback, um, about reviews and, and online reviews and responding to feedback. So I want to bring Kate back into the conversation here. 
Um, Kate, what would be your advice um, for hotels um, to effectively leverage those feedback and responses and reviews in order to drive more inquiries and actually support support growth, support conversions and you know maintain that positive image? Yeah, yeah, of course. I think Comrade's just done an amazing job in, in relation to how an, uh, you know the best 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 in best practice and um, program should be should be managed. But um so there's a couple of points that you know Comrade's already gone through. But if we think about it, I think the best way to think about it in my mind is really um you know you, you think the start of the customer journey is the acquisition side of it so where you're trying to influence someone's decision and so the best thing that you can actually do is actually take your loyal customers feedback to actually encourage that first part of the journey so there's a couple of different points to kind of work through on this and um Typically, when I work with, so I've worked with um, brands with, you know, 10 locations, up to 15,000 different locations across different industries. And right, if you just, there's five simple steps uh, from a strategy perspective that can help with growth and, um, and really acquisition as well. And it doesn't matter how um, mature a, a business's program is, or if you are just starting out, these five simple steps really Really help help take you back. Help can't get my words out. Help take you back to basic. Mm -hmm. so the best thing is, you know, it's actually about listening to your customers. You know, comrades already said this. So, you know, where are you getting feedback from? You know, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, we've spoken about reviews, but are you listening across the blogs, the forums, your social channels, etc. Mm -hmm. as well, which all are influential to a customer's first buying decision. So it's about listening and then it's responding. So do you have a software in place that kind of brings all that data into one place? So whether it's direct messages on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, et cetera, social comments. Obviously we've spoken heavily about reviews, but all your, also your surveys as well. So you know, a really good program is about listening, responding, and then you know, and, and I think also when you're listening, if you've got surveys, are you actually doing anything to encourage your customers at the end of that survey to drive their feedback to a public facing review site? Because there's so much value in that data and the feedback they've given you in the survey, if you're looking for the opportunities to drive that publicly. So, you know, whether that typically, you know, our advice would be, you know, the end of your survey, you should be driving and asking a customer to, to, to you know, go leave the feedback on Google or TripAdvisor. Um, and then really, once you've got all that data in one place, it's about analysing the feedback, which Conrad spoke about. So, you know, it's about learning from, from that feedback, you know, whether it's good, whether it's negative, you know, I always talk about celebrating the successes and then learning about, you know, the, those ch business challenges but it, that's valuable data because it makes, you know, the negative experience give you the opportunity to drive that right change and right behaviour within the business. Mm. Um, but ultimately, um, where I see um, programmes work really well is when it's not just a central team involved in the programme. It's actually where the programme runs from the executives, so from the top right through every different mm. every part of the business so you know you've got the local users the hotel managers hotel staff actually engage listening to that well. so if you look at all those different opportunities across the business um then ultimately that's giving you the power really you know at that first touch point when customers are interacting and you know uh, what at any point across the digital journey but yeah and thinking about those loyal customers and the feedback they're giving you to try and obviously and um, publicize that to drive the acquisition do you um we, we've touched again on, on 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 bad reviews um and and i'm just wondering kate whether you have any feedback and and you know Conrad, feel free to chime in on this too. What what would you, you advise for, or, or what are those best practices for dealing with the negative reviews? Like, how do you turn that negative um, into a positive? Um, 
is is that just making sure that you are responding always whether it's positive or negative feedback but are there any other tips there because you know we're not perfect um you know we we will understandably receive some negative feedback at some point um but we're all about learning and, and pushing the industry forward so how do we how can we best manage that yeah, again i think um the, the best programs um, that i've worked on is where actually it is the local managers that are empowered to actually respond to the reviews themselves mm -hmm. you know some of the businesses i've worked with have been very nervous about this because they're thinking right we need to do some training we, we're concerned about how they might respond but you know the, the the training and education in the business around why it's important one to respond the responding is important because it's just good CX practice, good customer experience practice to make sure your customers feel heard and listened to so that mm. they feel valued. But if we think about the start of the Google journey, um, you know, if you're responding to reviews as well, it's going to help you with the Google algorithm when someone's searching for a hotel near me. So there's lots of different factors in why it's important, but ultimately it's about best customer experience. Mm. Um, we typically encourage um you know central teams to think about branded tone of voice templates that can be either built into the software or that can be utilized to try and help their um, local users you know formulate a, a really good professional response and then obviously with things like you know ai is it the hot topic you know there's ai tools out there as well that can be you know within platforms or you know within reputation we give um, our users the ability to generate an AI suggested response. Mm -hmm. Again, my advice wouldn't be that they should just use the AI generated response. I think they should use it as a starting point, really. To mm. help them. Um, you know, sometimes you can get writer's block and you just don't know how to respond to something. Mm -hmm. So the AI in my mind should just be used as, right, okay, it just needs a starting point here. And then it gives you something to work with and tweak so that it is on point for your brand and um, it looks like a really professional response. But ultimately, you know, from a training and education perspective, it's quite simple. Don't air your dirty laundry online. Count to 10 if you've got a negative review that you don't agree with. And then, um, and then think about a professional response. Um, and, it, and it's also about directing a negative customer offline as well. Mm -hmm. So if it is a public facing review, it's about you know, giving them an opportunity to speak to someone. So it could be the host mm -hmm. manager, it could be a customer care team, you know, so they know that you want to engage with them further, to, you know, to take them seriously. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, yeah, just to add on to that, you know, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth, uh, Kate, um, you know, in terms of, of responding and taking the, the, the conversation offline. I think as well, there needs to be an element of, of creativity, especially if it's something that goes quite viral um, in terms of online reputation. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you touched upon, Kate, as well, about, you know, this, what, what happens on social media. Um, and there's actually one, one quite uh, humorous case that I always like to refer to that was handled really well by Ryanair. Uh, this was years ago. I don't even remember how long ago it was. Um, and uh, uh, I hope you don't want me saying. So essentially what happened was um, it was a cold winter's night in, uh, in some airport in the UK. And one of the, uh, one of the ground crew um, drew in the snow a, a, a very large um, inappropriate uh, <laughs> image. And um, this was taken a photo of and it kind of went viral. And to this day, I still love the response that Ryanair made. And I have it here with me. It goes... While our ground crew excel at industry-leading 25-minute turnarounds, art isn't their forte, as they've clearly forgotten to draw wings on their snow aeroplane. <laughs> um, and and it just you know totally diluted the the the, the, the scenario, and, and everyone had a bit of a laugh, you know. Um, and so sometimes you kind of you, you know putting your head in the sand and, and pretending it, you know it doesn't exist or ignoring it. I think that can be counterproductive. Sometimes as a business, you need to just own up to it, but also then, you know, handle it in a, in a creative manner. And, um, you know, to what you were saying, Kate, about AI, that, you know, AI can take you so far. And I think it's a really, really useful tool, but definitely there needs to be some human element and creative element um, when, when you manage these kinds of, of scenarios. Conrad, staying with you um, momentarily before I uh, bring bring Anna back into, into the conversation, um, there is something about to say here about empowering teams to be able to make those those decisions right and be that um, 
relying on AI to, to do mm -hmm. sort of initial ideation. Um, but I think there's something to be said about, about accountability and, and taking responsibility for, for mm -hmm. what is pushed out there. So how are you empowering your teams and actually encouraging them to take ownership and, and make the right decision when it comes to dealing with, be it, be it negative feedback, but also positive too? Um, I mean, so from, from my side, I um, provide as much training and support um, in terms of guiding teams on, on how to respond. Uh, there, you know, there are best practices in how a, a response should be structured. Um, the, the challenge actually, I think, is with the, with the good reviews, um, because we're, again, we're fortunate we have many of them. And so you don't want to um, have these cookie cutter responses. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's a really, really helpful um, uh, opportunity for, for AI, just to kind of come up with some cool, creative ways of, of responding. Um, so, um, so that's kind of what, what I do you know, from my side. Um, from, from the team side um, directly, I mean, we just kind of let them know that that is their responsibility, you know, treat it as a guest almost in your, in, in your hotel. Mm -hmm. um, and so the teams are responsible for looking at feedback. They're encouraged to look at feedback. Um, there's, there are KPIs to responding um, to feedback, so that is tracked and, and monitored um, with, the, with the help of our, our review pro portal. Um, and actually on, on, that, on the portal uh, topic of portals, all of our teams have access to, to that, that portal. Um, and um, uh, we have you know, different view levels and whatnot, so you, you know, if you're concerned about data protection, then there's ways around that. Um, but yeah, the teams, the teams constantly look uh, um, at the feedback and they're just so passionate. Um, uh, about it, it's uh, it's yeah, it's just really uh, encouraging them to um, to treat it as a as a as a guest in front of them, um, uh, and yeah, and it works really really well. On that point, I'm going to bring Anna back in. Um, oh, her hand's gone straight up, so <laughs> perfect timing. Um, no, I was just gonna I was just gonna add that more and more we have clients that um, uh, are asking how. Can we, how can they involve different teams? And I've conducted myself training sessions for kitchen uh, staff members, for f &B restaurant members, uh, team members. So uh, we were talking about leveraging data, but um, at Riverpro at least we are offering multiple accesses. So um, mm. either if you are working in the uh, front office or you're working into, you know, into BAP um, guest experience solutions, you can have access to the same data and, uh, and how you can engage your teams with that data, help them to understand their contribution in their day-to-day -day work. It's really crucial and important as well for the hotel. You know, uh, it's incredible to do so. Um, so I think that... First of all, the good news is that more and more people are understanding that guest feedback and the guest experience is crucial for, you know, for the revenues of the hotels. And second, how can technology can help and support hotels to involve the other teams? Yeah, I mean, I get I get notifications um, all the time. Well, not, not too often, but every now and again, when there's a negative review that comes in, you know, so I, I I'll immediately um, either take a screenshot of it or send an email across the team or just simply pick up the phone and and call them and so that the fact that they know that, that that's being monitored and looked at is, is you know really kind of encourages them to do well and then equally important or not more important is is the good reviews and and the ones the good ones that come in um that that, that they're spoken about and and they're celebrated um because that's it, it's important it, it encourages teams to keep on doing a good job and especially seeing your name written there if, if your name is written in a positive review and you know you've made a good good impact the team they just they want to know what, what guests are saying um so there yeah. are actually hotel brands that in their surveys to clients are asking is there any specific member that help your state yeah. you know uh yeah. be better uh and you can actually write uh, the, the name and and hotels are using that in the lineups uh to congratulate their efforts and i think that that creates an atmosphere where every single team member really contributes into the overall goal uh, and that that's amazing on the topic of success let's let's stay with you anna for a moment um, when you are measuring the impact of your reputation management efforts and the success of maybe certain tools platforms or even campaigns what kpis do you think hoteliers should be should be tracking um well i think that 
first of all, I really want to point out, and and uh, and I think that it's a strong statement, you know, that uh, ninety five percent of travelers are reading reviews, and the impact of one negative review, uh, it's it's like it has the weight of five or six positive reviews, mm -hmm. so it has a huge huge mm -hmm. impact. So, I think that when it comes to Related to the, the previous topic, improving online visibility and maintain a positive online image, it's crucial that uh, that hotels are responding to, to those reviews. Uh, it's vital you know, to maintain a, a positive image because it builds trust and it shows that actually you're listening and, and, and provides as well insights for improvement to hotels and, and influences the booking decisions not the ones that left your property but the ones that are about to come so i think that setting up strategies to you know uh, face the uh, feedback either whether it's coming from survey or it's coming from online review it's really important uh target who in the hotels are gonna address the uh the the respond to the feedback how are you gonna escalate whatever issues have been you know mentioned um we are actually encouraging more and more hotels to uh set up in-stay surveys uh where mm -hmm. they can understand during the stay if mm -hmm. guests are facing any problems so they can use them as a recovery action um and again technology is is fantastic as long as you use it you know because we have some clients that are using in-state surveys but they don't have the capability or the capacity to really react uh, while guests are still in house. So if you're asking a guest, what's your problem? How can we improve your experience? They communicate it to you and you do nothing. Then the oh. impact, the negative yeah. impact that you're creating is huge. And then it takes, you know, a lot of time and effort to uh, recuperate. So in terms of KPIs, um, at Shiji Review Pro, we are offering what we call Global Review Index, that is a proprietary algorithm that takes in consideration not only uh, the volume of, of reviews, also the score of the reviews and the weight of, of, uh, on, of we put more weight on how fresh the reviews are because, you know, in the algorithms that Booking.com, TripAdvisor and Google, um, mm. it, it has an impact. It's not the same when you go online and imagine yourself going online to book a trip. You're going to be faced most probably by the most recent reviews and that has a higher mm. influence, you know, on your decision. So um, definitely we provide the GRI that basically is how is your online reputation working? We help you benchmark your online reputation uh, with uh, with whoever you feel that are your main competitors. So you can really uh, benchmark your performance uh, against the uh, competitors. So competition is really uh, a KPI that we want to always encourage our guests. Sentiment analysis is something that we also want our clients to to use it and to to have it in your you know in the in the key metrics to look at because definitely um, you can evaluate the tone of the reviews and understand whether guests are thrilled or frustrated and what are the you know what are the topics categories concepts that are mentioned the most so you can address later on internally how you want to do the change or even it's if you realize and actually. We launched um, the, uh, I don't know what how many editions, sorry, but we launched the Q3 edition of our uh, global management report where, you, where we are offering hotels to understand, you know, key trends in the industry. And it's, you know, segmented by regions. And, and you know, we've, we've noticed that AC uh, is one of the mentions that for the last years has been mentioned negatively the most. So understanding this, key concepts affecting the guest experience uh, can support later on to the general manager to make, you know, CAPEX, CAPEX decisions. Mm -hmm. um, another key metric in regards to surveys is uh, the NPS. Definitely, you need to keep track of the NPS. You want to understand how highly your guests are recommend you. That is a free marketing uh, tool that you can that you can have. The, the better the guests are leaving your property, more are they gonna uh, recommend uh, your property. Um, and I think definitely focusing in these KPIs, hotel, hoteliers can gain comprehensive view 
of their online reputation and also wise to set benchmarks and track progress to see you know how reputation strategy are performing um mm -hmm. i think that conrad you have your your hand raised so maybe you can no, it's just, it's just to emphasize the, uh, the, you know, what you said about having in-state surveys. Um, you know, the more engagement, the more connections you can have with, uh, with, with the guest while they're still in your business um, and, and address any challenges they have um, is, is the best strategy to, to ensure you have um, great, uh, great reputation online. Um, and the, the post-state survey is actually something that we are, are uh, considering and looking into because it's such a, uh, a useful um, tool to to quantitatively capture um, you know any insights and, and, and feedback from from guests while they're still with you. Um, once yeah. they leave, they're gone, right? So you kind of need to need to address it right away. And you that are, you are in Dubai, you have uh, many guests from different cultures. Some of them are going to approach uh, you know a front office and they're exactly, going to talk about yeah. the problems, yeah. but some others are going to just are, keep yeah. it, and oh, that oh, you are going to oh, find oh, out oh, in a review yeah. that yeah. something really went very bad for for them so i yeah. think that encouraging them and not only by a service because now we have other instant tools right we have mm -hmm. uh, 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 communication tools so you can really start engaging with guests yeah. before they arrive to the hotel until yeah. they leave yeah. the property yeah. and if yeah. you are capable to you know keep track of this communication with the right technology uh that is going to make you uh you know a uh, superhero in the guest experience and the guest satisfaction yeah. <laughs> sorry kate you had your hand raised and i just you know jump in no, no that's fine yeah no i think um i just wanted to jump in relation to that in in stay survey because um i don't just work with hospitality i worked with other sectors as well and what's great is that um you know, when we do our events, customers learn across the different sectors to influence their program and learn what mm. other sectors are doing. Um, and you know, we've got we've got a customer in the automotive sector who did a in um, in store survey. Um, so, and, and basically, what they they said is right. If you um, you can scan a QR code and tell us if you're happy. And, mm. They had a they set a three minute SLA in relation to getting back to that customer, their customer care team, and actually what they found after um, implementing that was even if they gave that customer a bad experience or they had some issue, they would they said that they would come back because of the way they were communicated with. Mm. It's all about the communication. In yeah. Yep. It's so powerful to resolve. Yeah. an issue right then and there it shows you care it shows that you you have that personal relationship with a customer or a guest and um it's uh, it's really impactful and not only and and related to the ai let, let's imagine uh, a guest that is checking into a hotel that she stayed before and the hotel's ai system remembers her preferences oh, so yeah. when she arrives you know her room is set to their ideal temperature and a welcome message suggests, you know, a nearby yoga class because you know that she is into sports and she is into healthy lifestyle. So AI really can support a lot on, mm -hmm. you know, um, keeping the guest experience and creating that loyalty that we want because we want guests to remember our hotels. We want guests to come back and we want guests to promote to their family members, to their friends. So, uh, Eloise, we were talking about AI, but this is definitely how AI and leveraging AI with a good technology is going to really yeah. support hotels, you know, mm -hmm. to understand yeah. guest journey, preferences, uh, helping to communicate, asking for feedback uh, at the real time. So if a guest, you know, that has gone to your spa and has been, you know, uh, in a massage for 60 minutes, how cool it is that the technology is able to identify and just launch a survey that say, hey, how was your massage? Uh, remember mm -hmm. that we have this activity or this other activity happening. So, yeah, I think that AI is going to really support and transform hospitality and in the end for 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 a good uh, and for a better uh, guest experiences. Yeah, I agree. It, it, it's, it has a lot of potential and it, it'll help, you know, like you said, it'll help teams. It'll do the heavy lifting to then allow yeah. the teams to to really have that personal and, and, and 
uh, exceptional interaction. Um, it and good point to... because it's not replay. It's not. It's not meant to be. I guess maybe yeah, the yeah, future is going to change, but it's not to. It's not meant to replace human touch. You know, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's really it's meant to enhance it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We we've um. I'd like to finish off with a, a question from the audience, but I think we've already addressed it in a roundabout kind of way. Um, and it's whether we believe, the panel believes that investing in such tools like automation tools would help to drive positive reviews, positive experiences through faster responses. And judging off Kate's um, example of what happened in the aut automotive um, sector or, or a client that you had, even if that automated, even if that response to an on-property experience, with that, whether that experience was a negative or a positive one, that automated holder and allowing your staff members to respond to that within the three minutes, be it verbally or physically in person, I imagine would lead to a more positive experience. Um, would you be kind enough to share your thoughts on that, on that question, whether we think that investing in automation tools would be more beneficial because of that faster response time yeah absolutely i mean automation tools obviously it's you know it's about what i said at the beginning it's about always knowing but always being able to act as well and that's at every level of the business so mm -hmm. and there is an roi attributed to that like anna said in relation to you know their model, you know, we see it um, in relation to our customers across different sectors as well. And, you know, it's proven we've got lots of case studies that, that show that and um, that track the NPS in relation to that um, reaction time as well from a survey standpoint. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if a customer is communicated with, you know, they will come back, even if it was mm -hmm. experience. And, you know, we, we, we've got lots of data around that, so. Um, yeah, brilliant. No, that, and and, that... and it's, it's about perception, right? As soon as you can identify that the negative review has been posted online, as soon as you can, you know, change the perception, you know that you, you cannot change the fact that something wrong happened, but definitely addressing it, you it means a lot for the new audience. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. One thing is AI supporting, you know, how fast you can address. Uh, but the other thing is automation uh, really helps you understand and, 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 and give the right notice to the right team members uh, that this is happening and they can do something about it. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, we are we are having an, our, our case management automation that uh, you can even set up deadlines and you can track the the root causes to you know in order to uh in the future um make better mm -hmm. you know operational uh decisions and and setting up the right teams and the right tools at the right place sounds like we're going to get incredibly more efficient um at our jobs <laughs> in the future um i can i've got a, an eye on the time um so i am going to wrap up today's conversation so i'm just going to say a quick thank you to anna to kate and conrad for their insights um we are going to keep this webinar open right at the end to allow our audience members to follow up on any of the links that we've popped into the chat um including our speakers linkedin profiles because there's lots today that we didn't actually touch on um, so there is more to discuss there um but i'm just going to um flag a, a couple more slides to um, close off today's uh, conversation. Um, I would like to highlight the next webinar in the series is taking place in two weeks time. Uh, that's on November the 18th, I believe, if I can see my screen correctly. Um, and that is going to be a webinar on guest room management and smart building automation. Uh, we'd love to see you there. The link to register has been popped into the chat. And here's a quick overview of all the in-person events that we have coming up. Um, I'm at the Short Term Rental Summit tomorrow in London, if anybody would like to uh, see the wider IHM team in person. We have the um, first urban living overseas event taking place next week, um, hosted by our wonderful friends at Rove in Dubai. Uh, tickets are still on sale. You can follow those links into the chat. And on the topic of AI, keep your eyes 
healed. Um, because early next year, or some point next year, we are going to be hosting a series of AI masterclasses designed for our hospitality and real estate audience members to get hands-on experience of how they can actually use AI within their businesses. This can include marketing, this can, can include sales, this can include financial modeling. We want to be the media and events brand to help you on your digital transformation journey. So really excited for that. Um, again, keep your eyes peeled for further details. And if you're interested in working with us, either across our in-person or digital events, please do get in touch with my colleague, Katie. Her details are up on your screens and also popped into the chat. So once again, thank you all for tuning in today. Thanks again to Kate, Anna and Conrad for their time and insights. Thanks to Rove for being a continued supporter of ours. Um, we love working with the team there. And if I don't see you tomorrow in London, I will see you in two weeks time for the next BHN webinar. Um, but do take care, folks, and see you all soon.